In January 2015, a U.S. Navy jet over the Atlantic recorded this video on its infrared camera. This video has gone on to be one of the most famous and intriguing UFO videos ever. The camera changes to black hot mode where hotter objects are darker. Toward the end of the video is the most interesting part. It's rotating. What was this object and how far away was it? Was it really rotating? Various people, including myself, tried to reconstruct the camera sight lines using the data on screen. We know the F-18 jet was banking to the left by this much. We know its airspeed. And we know the angles that the camera was tilted down and panning from left to right. But everyone was getting different sight lines. The exact flight path is unknown, and the angles that it creates are critical. This is an extremely zoomed in image. Swivel just a hair to either side and everything changes. How to get a better flight path approximation. There's one data set from the video that no one had used. The movement of the clouds through the frame. So I thought, what if I create a 3D simulation as I did for the GoFast UFO last year? Any geometrically accurate recreation of the sight line would have to reproduce this camera view. Even though we don't know how high or how far away these clouds were, we can at least start to narrow down what the gimbal object might have been doing and go from there. So I went into Blender. There's the Earth, and there's the upper surface of some clouds over it, matching the curvature. I thought I'd start by putting the cloud tops around 6,000 feet, since they look like stratocumulus, which are very common over water. And I started with the limit case of the clouds being stationary. If you start out with things being minimal, you can always alter or add variables later. I added a really bad F-18 jet and its camera, and animated the camera scanning from left to right according to the numbers on screen. Finally, I created a flight path with the proper speed changes and edited the jet's path curvature and angles until the simulated clouds behaved just like they do in the video. You'll notice at this point I still hadn't added the object to the scene. I wanted to make sure all of the angles produced the right cloud motion first without any regard to what the object might have been doing. In the video, the object remains at the center of the picture because it's being auto-tracked and stabilized. It could have been moving in any number of ways. So my challenge became, where are some of the places that I can put it and move it so that it stays in the center of the simulation's camera view? That should set some constraints on what the real object was doing. I found that if I placed the object far away, it had to continuously bank to our right. If I placed it much closer, it had to bank left. Which meant there were scenarios in between where it could move in a straight line. Also, if the object was receding fast from the F-18, it had to descend. If it was receding slowly or approaching, it had to climb. So there were scenarios where the object is at a constant altitude. That meant there's one particular scenario where the object could be moving straight and level. It's 29.8 nautical miles away, going 380 knots at 18,700 feet. But that only applies to the limit case. What if the clouds are higher or lower or moving? The highest that the clouds could be without obscuring the sky was about 16,000 feet. So I put them there and also at 2,000 feet. Separately, I also had them moving 100 knots in four directions. In all cases, the same scenarios exist, including a straight and level one. Changing the variables just shifts the scenarios in the plot. Cloud movement toward or away has no effect at all. So the influence of any cloud motion is a sine function of this angle. There's one more piece of information we can get from the screen. The object appears to get about 20% bigger over the course of the video. This could be because it's getting closer. Or we could be seeing heat from a jet engine or engines that's getting more direct to the sight line and therefore hotter and creating more glare. 
It turns out that's exactly what happens in all of the straight and level scenarios. With the clouds moving 100 knots to the right, for example, the angle goes from 11 degrees down to 7 degrees, as measured in all three dimensions. So does all of this mean that the object was 30 odd miles away, flying straight and level? Not necessarily. An eyewitness to the avionics suite that was tracking the gimbal object described it as being much closer and slowing down and reversing direction. Other objects were also seen. There's a whole fleet of them, look on the ASA. Interestingly enough, there are valid scenarios where a close-by object can move like he described, at least as seen from above, like on a radar screen. But in 3D, the trajectories are more complex I mean, it's possible that a physical object took this trajectory 300 miles off the coast, but the skeptic in me thinks it's more likely a system glitch. It seems unlikely that such a bizarre trajectory would flatten out to being straight and level farther away. What about the famous rotation at the end? It's rotating. The debunker Mick West has a detailed explainer video about how the gimbal system created a rotating glare in this case. So check it out. The link is in the video description. At least three lines of evidence point to the rotation being local at the camera. For example, if you stabilize the picture on the horizon indicator, the object and the plane icon maintain almost the same angle, even when the plane banks more. They are rotating together. And unless you think the UFO is watching the plane from afar and mimicking its movements to the millisecond, this is kind of a slam dunk that the rotation is local, not out there far away. Anyway, here's what my simulated camera view looks like with some effects added. I've stabilized the whole picture on the object. Some people have imagined that this halo is a cold aura or an envelope of space-time that the UFO generates, but actually it's just the same enhancing effect. When I started this study, I didn't go looking for a straight and level solution and I was legitimately surprised when one popped out. But it makes me fairly confident that this was just a distant plane. As for why it wasn't identified as a jet, I don't know. The transponder might have been off. Maybe it was smuggling drugs. The gimbal object will never be identified for certain, but at least we now know how it could have been moving at various possible distances, which is probably the best we'll ever do.